fire and fired up to be here tonight to preach the word. Amen. Please turn your Bibles with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. You know, uh, it, it's been definitely very incredible putting the, the conference together with the Specmans. I'm very honored, my wife and I, to be here. Come on, Jonathan. You know, I love that Wade in the Water song. I was like, you guys have to do that song. The little, like, what, I don't even know what you call it. I call it a rift. I'm like, this is awesome. But I was watching Paul sing. I'm like, man, I'm not worshiping hard enough. This brother is sweating right here. I need to worship a little bit harder. So prayerfully, I'll be sweating a little bit during this sermon. Amen. Well, of course, I'll bring you greetings from New York City. You know, uh, my wife and I, we have the honor and the privilege to lead the Amped region of the New York City Church, which is arts, media, professionals, and education. You know, uh, it was really, it's really cool. I was looking at everyone who was here, and I, I, I was like, man, I have connections with a lot of people. Some really good, good memories, and some bad memories. I, I think Josiah Kristen saw me at my worst. <laughs> we won't talk about that, though. <laughs> That's not a sermon for another day. Josiah likes to bring that up sometimes, so I figured I'd bring it up first. So then, you know what I mean? It's like 8 Mile, you know, it's trying to control that. You know, last time Michael was in town, I, I actually found out that he was my grandfather in the faith. So he baptized the guy who baptized me, and I was like, wow, that's incredible. I used to have this pretty awesome afro in, in, in Portland. It was awesome. Tony Anton used to call me Ben Wallace. That was one I got baptized with, and I loved it. It was a pretty good fro. Michael just started busting out laughing when I showed him the picture, and he was like, bro, I'm the reason why your hair got cut. I was like, wow, bro, thank you. I, I, I forgive you. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I'm just very grateful to be here tonight. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. You know, I was trying to figure out what to preach about. Obviously, I had a title, and I'll, I'll share that in a moment. But I think hopefully this will encourage you and inspire you. Please ask you chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, there's a time for everything. And a season for everything under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Now let me tell you, tonight is a time to dance. It's a time to build, amen? We are a call to create. That's the name of the conference. Uh, but we're going to talk about something a little bit different that hopefully goes with the theme. You know, I was talking with uh, Mario, who just sang Wade in the Water last night. Yeah. And we were both just reflecting on the fact that this is actually happening. Yeah. So we talked about this a year ago, Mar Mario and I. We're like, man, we, we got to do that AMS conference Luke was talking about. And we were just pl planning and plotting, trying to figure out how we're going to make this happen. We we're still kind of a little bit in COVID. So I, I brought it up at staff. I said, hey, bro, remember that conference you said that you wanted to do two years ago? Can, can, we, can we still do that? He said, bro, absolutely. And here we are. You know, it, it's been just incredible because Mario shared last night and he was getting a little bit emotional. Put him on the spot. I love Mario. And he was like, bro, this is what the prophets long to see and hear. This right here. And so we were just kind of just meditating. And I was just like, man, you could just kind of see it. Like, I just imagine God and all the creatives of the Bible just fired up right now. Adam, of course, was probably the, the first songwriter in the Bible. I don't know if you guys, you guys knew that. He, he, God made Eve and that he just busted out and started singing. <laughs> You know, you have the, the singers and the songwriters like Asaph and the sons of Korah. You have the dancers like Miriam. The tip makers like Paul. The seamstresses like Lydia. And I just imagine David on a harp just getting ready to go crazy. You know, I'm probably honestly the least creative person here. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just from Southern California, San Bernardino. Wow. 
I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. It, 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 almost, it almost got me. It almost got me. You know, when it plays, you just kind of have to let it. You have to feel it a little bit. You know, we gotta change it a little bit. The walk on water, you know. You know, there are there are so many poets in the Bible. There are so many just amazing people who just created amazing things. All the songs that still fill us up today and inspire us. Amazing poets. We have amazing poets here right now in this room. Please 
please turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. I think we can all agree that ain't no party like the Jesus party. Amen. Michael's got some moves. Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't ready. Genesis chapter 1. The Bible reads, of course, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. Look in verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in, in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. You know, the first thing that, of course, God did was create something. Yes. Then he separated the darkness and the light. Amen. Yeah. You know, and then God, of course, He creates that. He creates men, and now God is the master creator. Yeah. And of course, we know that God created everything. Yeah. In Colossians 1, verse 15 and 16, the Bible reads, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through Him and for Him. You know, he creates man and he gives them this charge to be fruitful and multiply, to start creating. For in Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. See, of course, when we are creating anything, God is the one who's actually creating. God is working through us for his purpose purpose. The title of the sermon here is a mandate to create. A mandate to create. You know, when we are creating for God, of course, He's creating through us and and it is for His purpose to save a lost world. We know that God wants all men to be saved. All mankind. It's the same way the Bible was formed. That although we have men who wrote the Bible, God is the one who was working through them to give us the scriptures. God is behind it. You know, I uh, decided that I'm only going to give you guys one point tonight. I had to put a limit on myself. I, I like to preach. You know, my, my region knows this. We'll just, we'll be here for a couple hours. I was like, you know what? I'll do you guys a favor and do one point. You know, everything that God has created was for his good purpose. It was good. It was amazing. But man takes what God created and makes it dark. Makes it distorted. We use it sinfully. When it was designed to be used in a good way for his purpose. You see this all throughout the world in history. Look in Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. A mandate to create. I like being on to something. <laughs> Daniel chapter 12. In verse 1, the Bible reads, At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Point number one, and our only point is, you were created to be a star. You were created to be a star. 
You know, we're not talking about the way the, the world views a star. You know, we were talking last night with, uh, with, I was talking with Michael and Josiah, and they're talking about just, you know, Hollywood and actors and all this, this darkness. And I was like, really? That's what it's like? Just, just darkness. But the world views them as stars, as people to look up to, people to aspire to be. But they're filled with so much darkness. We're not talking about those kind of stars. We're talking about how God views a star. Those who lead many to righteousness. You know, there's a, a difference between diamonds and stars. Yeah. Diamonds, I would say, are the stars of the world. You guys understand? You guys remember that song um, by Rihanna, "Shine Bright Like a Diamond"? Yeah. Now, of course, the world chases after diamonds, all kind of riches and fame, and it's what the world wants. Now, you understand that diamonds, of course, they don't create light. No, no. They reflect it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. And that's that's what the world is like. You see, what happens is, is when you shut the lights off, those diamonds aren't shining no more. <laughs> However, on, when you are when you are a star, a star creates light. It is light. It's a part of light. Those are the disciples. Amen. <laughs> You know, it, it, it's the same that you can be in this spotlight. Yeah. You have this image, but when you turn the lights off, you're filled with darkness, sin, you're lost, and you're broken. Wow. But when you're a disciple, you're in the limelight. You have this light of Jesus, and when the lights go off, you're still shining. Look at Matthew chapter 5. You were created to be a bright light. Matthew chapter 5. Come on, bro. You know, I think sometimes as disciples we can get it twisted a little bit. We can forget the reason why we were saved and what we should be doing with our talents. With the skills that God has given us and we can turn the lights off and we turn back into a diamond you see if you are here tonight I hope it's to learn how to create for God amen now of course we want you to use your talents we want you to get into the industry we encourage that and we need you to do that but we need you to keep the light of Jesus burning Matthew chapter 5 in verse 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, we have to let our light shine. You know what happens when you put a candle under a bowl? It goes out. It goes out. Why? It has no oxygen. It has no life. The sad part is, is that's what some disciples do. Is that they have this, this light. When they come to the fellowship, they're bright, they're burning. Because they're surrounded by all the other disciples. And then they go to work. And then they go home. What happens to the light? You see, if you're not rooted in Jesus and you leave the church, you go outside and you're not rooted in Jesus, you will lose your oxygen and you will die spiritually. You see, it's very important to understand that your good deeds will encourage and lead the world to righteousness. That you holding on to your convictions will change the world. But why do you do that? Why do you say no to that? Why do you not jump into the sin with us? Because I believe in Jesus. You know, we, we need to make sure that we are focused and we are always burning for Jesus, no matter who we are around and no matter where we will go. We're burning 
for Jesus. You know, uh, it's interesting because oftentimes what happens is, is in our lives we can see disciples and be like, wow, they're so awesome. They're so fired up. Did you see that Instagram post? But off of Instagram, they're not disciples. You see, life looks really good on social media. I believe uh, Michael calls it Instagram. <laughs> we must have this conviction that no matter where we go, we will let our light shine. Of course, that is the light of Jesus that's inside of us. You know, I want to lift up uh, a couple of disciples in the New York City Church. You know, uh, Raven, who, who is up here? Raven, who's become a, a, a daughter and a faith to me and my wife. She reached out to Kalia, who reached out to Edie. Raven also, and of course they're all baptized. Raven also baptized her mom. Amanda, Ameko's a wife, who's up here. She's over there. Just recently got married. She also baptized her mom. And what's really incredible is that Kalia's mom just did L and D, which is incredible. Now, as Meredith, this is really incredible. As, as Meredith was in London, she's a model, and uh, Maria Hart reached out to her on Instagram. And now, as Meredith is a disciple, has been one for a few years. You know, I want to lift up uh, a very dear brother uh, to me, uh, Mario Mendiha. Huh? Uh, I've been discipling Mario for a little over a year now, and it's been a, we've had a lot of fun and ate a lot of good food together. Yeah, he likes Chick Fil A. I just gotta go along for the ride and the and, and the free food. But I, I appreciate Mario because Mario has had this conviction, and I, I want to share it with you because it, it really actually increased my faith. You know, uh, uh, his wife uh, recently uh, was baptized a couple of weeks ago, which is incredible. Now, before uh, Kayla, when she uh, decided to step back from the church, and then she realized later on that she needed to uh, get baptized again, um, it, it was incredible because Mario's convictions for his wife and for God did not change. And his heart was, you know what? I'm going to give missions as if my wife is still a disciple. My pledge is not going to drop. I'm going to give my pledge as if my wife is still a disciple. Why? Because I believe she will be a disciple again. And it was, it was amazing. My wife was able to baptize Kayla on, on her spiritual birthday. My wife's spiritual birthday, which is very special. Now Mario and I have that bond, which is really cool. I also want to share about uh, Uni G. His name is Gabriel. He likes to be called Uni G. Now, Uni, Uni has had very strong convictions. He's been a Christian for uh, around eight months. Now, I remember uh, Ernest reached out to him and myself and Ronald. We had the honor to study the Bible with them, and it was a lot of fun. He was incredible. We'd go to his place, and he shows all his little tracks he was working on. And he's like, hey, listen to this. What do you think about this? And I was like, hey, man, bro, you know. If you're going to be a disciple, you probably want to change a little bit of those words. And it wasn't like any swear words or anything, but I was like, just, 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 just change them a little bit. You understand who you're, who you're rapping to. And it was cool. He's like, okay, okay. And then it, it, he was like, okay. And he, 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 he fixed some stuff, but I didn't even tell him to do this next part. He, uh, he went home uh, a couple of, maybe a couple weeks later, a month later, he was just kind of meditating and he took all of his old music off of his uh, streaming platforms. I, I never challenged him to do it. I didn't even know if he could, but apparently he owned all the rights to it, so he took it all off. And so he, my wife just recently found out about that and she was in tears because he has not made any money because of it. And so he's like, hey, no matter what, I'm still going to hit my missions and I'm going to figure it out. But because of his conviction to let his light shine, two of his best friends were baptized. His sister was baptized. 
And he always brings his friends to church and they always come. It's incredible. It's always a party when UDG is there. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 28. We'll close out here. Matthew 28. No diamonds here. I like that. I saw maybe a few people were taking the diamonds out of their ears, you know. I'm just playing. I'm not allowed to wear earrings anymore. Luke says every time I wear earrings, he knows I'm struggling, so I don't wear them anymore. <laughs> Apparently, it's me drifting a little bit to a diamond, you know? I gotta, gotta say a, a star. Matthew chapter 28. You know, I was thinking through this uh, a mandate to create. Really, the only mandate that we were given to create was to create disciples. Matthew chapter 28. In verse 18, the Bible reads. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You know, the reason why God has given us these talents, these skills, is to make disciples. That you literally have gifts that God chose for you. And that those gifts would be used to change lives. The books, the songs, the rapping, the the the, the, the anchors. Is it anchors? Okay. Anchors. Social media I, icons. I don't know what you mean. Info, influencer. Influencer. Oh, there it is. Sorry, guys. I'm 30 years old. Man, I'm losing it. I'm losing my touch. It, 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 understand. My, we're having our third child. A lot is going on. All right. <laughs> God, I gotta get it in there. But we have been given this mandate to seek and save the lost. I want to ask you all a question here. If you are not creating for God, then I want you to ask yourself, who or what are you creating for? I want to put before you that if you are not creating for God, you may be creating for some idols. But I know that there's not a single person in here that's creating for idols. I know that everyone across the world in the sold out movement is creating for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I want to challenge each and every one of you this weekend. I believe it's going to be incredible. The speaking, the sermonettes, the, all the lessons I pray will fill you up and encourage you. And then you can take this back to your home church with a fire and a zeal to change the industry. Yeah! Let us submit to the mandate to create. Let us shine the light of Jesus everywhere we go. And therefore, let us be stars that God created us, the stars that God created us to be, stars that lead many to righteousness. Thank you so much. And to God be all the glory.